Welcome to today's tutorial on adding frames to your images in Luminar Neo. With this technique, you'll be able to create simple picture frame mockups that can be used on your own images. This will help you to present your images to your customers and share them on a social media or your website. To get started, make sure that you download our sample files by following the link in the description of this video. The tutorial itself will have a three steps. In the first one, I will show you how we create the frame mockup. After that, we will add our image to it. And finally, in the third step, I will show you how to add some extra touches to make it look amazing. So now we are ready. So let's go into Luminar Neo and start by creating the frame mockup. So as you can see, we are already in the application and we are starting in a catalog module. As always, we are starting by looking at the sample files. And so let's have a look at what we have here. We have the sample image we're going to be using for this project. Then we have a black layer we're going to be using for shadow. And after that, as a bonus, I will give you four frames that are ready to be used. You will not need to cut anything at shadow. You will simply be able to use them. Just add the image to it and share it. So make sure that you keep them and use them on any of your future projects. However, if you don't have the frames, and want to start from beginning, the first thing you will need to do is to create the mockup, the frame. And for this, you will need any image, just like this one here, that basically has a frame on it. To make it a little easier, look for an image that doesn't have a strong shadows or light on it. So something like this will do. We have the empty frame and beautiful room. So if you're ready, just select it and then move it into edit module by clicking on a edit on the top of the screen or using E on your keyboard. So the first thing we need to do is to remove this space, the part of the frame where we're going to be adding our own image. To do this, let's just jump quickly in the layers panel, make sure that the layer is selected and then we go into our main toolbar and click on layer properties. Once we open that, select Masking and then select Brush. After this, we need to zoom in. Now you can zoom in with your keyboard by using Command or Control Plus, or don't forget that you also have the shortcut at the bottom of your screen. You just click on it and then basically use one of the shortcuts and presets here. So let's go to 300. Once you have your brush selected, don't forget that you can use a spacebar on your keyboard to move around. And as long as you see the entire frame, we are ready to start. Now we need to adjust our brush. So we're going to be removing the part of the image. So first we switch our brush from paint to erase. After that, we can adjust the size in a moment, but with the softness, I want you to take it from 100 to 0. Today, we're going to be using 0. We want a really, really sharp edges. With the strength, we want to stay on 100%, and we're going to zoom in even closer as we're going to start by erasing the parts close to the edges. So let's start right here. Let's zoom in again, maybe twice. And now let's adjust the size of our brush again by using the size slider or using bracket keys on your keyboard. So I think somewhere around 28 or maybe 30 to start with. And what I want you to do is to click once at the beginning and corner of the shape here. So somewhere around here, I'm keeping an eye on both of the edges and I just make one click. As you can see, immediately you can see through. Well, there is nothing behind it, but basically now you see the background behind this frame. After this, let's just make it a little bit more visible and we're going to hold shift on our keyboard and click exactly in the same location, just on the opposite side. So somewhere around here, holding a shift on a keyboard, one click. So it creates a straight line between these two. Similarly, again, we make sure that we are close to the edge here. So we click one more time and then we go at the bottom of the frame 
position our cursor in the corner, holding a shift on the keyboard and we click again. So it creates two straight lines. We have half of the job done. Again, we click one more time, making sure that we have the edge selected. Maybe that's a little bit too close. So to bring it back, you just use Command or Control Z. And we can go even closer if we want to and click once here and then navigate to the opposite side. Make sure that you include the shadow. And again, shift on a keyboard, one click, and we are almost finished. Just one more side. Now we can make the brush a little bit bigger, somewhere around here. Click one more time just to select the corner of the frame and then go all the way to the top where we're gonna finish it. Again, holding shift, one click, and now we are done with this part. Let's just zoom back. And you can see that we have pretty much selected the frame. Once we do this, we can now zoom in just a little bit and basically use a bigger brush to remove the rest. So you can really go quite fast on this one. Keep increasing the size of your brush so you can go quite fast and just have it done in no time. Now we are pretty much finished with the heavy removal. Now to double check if you want to show your mask, just hit a backslash or slash key. And now we can see that we are almost done. There is just one bit here and maybe a little bit here. And the last thing we need to do is to take care of the corners. So to do this, we're going to really zoom in very tight um, and navigate towards the corner, maybe even closer. And once we're there, we again want to adjust the size of our brush, use something small and just create one and two clicks. Now I took a little bit too much. So what we can do, we can choose the paint and just bring gently back the edge. So it all looks same. And then just go into the other corner to make sure that we don't have a corner with a circle. Just we have a really nice and sharp corner. Again, back to erase, one click, two clicks. It looks good. If we have taken too much, don't forget to use the paint to paint it back. And now ah, there is a little piece here. So just remove that again, back down to the corner, do the same thing and finish the same thing for all four corners. Once we finish, we can now again hit the backslash or slash key on our keyboard, which will hide the mask and we have our frame ready or at least the first part. Now for the next part, we need to add our image. So let's just close this and go into the catalog. In the catalog, now we're going to select the image, which is now ready. We can just move it into edit panel. And as you can see, all is done. I done all sorts of effects to it. I have replaced the sky, added the glow, applied LUT, and really it's just ready to be shared. So what you want to do at this point is to export it. So we just right click on the image and select export. In the export, navigate towards the location where you want to export it. In our case, we're going to use the same location as the sample files. We can call it a new image. And inside of the folder, let's call it church. After this, coming to the export settings, let's just go for nice high quality. Let's say that we're going to stay on original size, sharpening, keep it on none, color space as RGB, format JPEG, 300 pixels on inch and quality 100 percent. Once you're done with all of that, just click on save and Luminar will export the image for us. Once the image is exported, we can now continue with our frame. To do this, just select the image with the frame again and again move it into edit module. The next step is to add our image to it. To do this, we need to go into the layers panel, click on the plus sign, and then click on load image or add image here. This will open a new window and all you need to do is to find the location where you saved your image. For us, it's in the sample files and in the new image folder. Here, just select the image and click on open. 
it will load the image into application. So now just click on it, select it and add it into the layer. As you can see, it's here, but it needs a little bit of adjusting. First of all, we need to go into the layer properties and this time we need to go into image mapping and click on fit. Once you do that, you will see that the ratio of the image is fixed and now we can go ahead and adjust its position and size. When you're working with the layers here in Luminar Neo, once you hover over the layer, you will see your mouse change from mouse into the hand and you can now position the image around. At the same time, you will get four white dots in a corner of your layer and you can use them to adjust the size of the layer. So when you hover over, you can move it around and with the four dots, you can adjust the size. Finally, to just finish the transforming options, you can also rotate the image around when you hover on the corners of the layer and you can adjust the size of the layer individually by hovering over the sides of the layer. But for us, just the positioning with the hand and adjusting the size with your four white dots. So let's just position it as best as possible behind the frame. So I'm thinking maybe something like this. And I think we are good to go. Now looking at the image, you can see that it's a little bit see-through. It's transparent. And that's good because it helps us to position it around the frame. However, to adjust it, now we're gonna go back into the layer properties and increase the opacity slider. Once we do that, you can see that now it's not see-through anymore. The final thing we need to do to fix this is just to go into the layers panel and take our new image and just drag and drop it under the layer with the frame. Once we do that, just like magic, the new image will appear in the frame. Once you finish with this, just hit enter on your keyboard and voila, we have the first part done. So we know how to create our mocha. We know how to add our image to it. And it's time for the third and final part where first of all, we're gonna start by adding a light shadow into the frame to make it a little bit more realistic. To do this, we're gonna again go into the layers panel, click on a plus sign and click on load image. Again, navigate towards your sample files and select the black layer. After this, click on open. And again, once it appears in your My Images, just click on it and add it to the image. When it's added, again, let's go into the layer properties and here click on fit. After this, just make sure that you adjust it in such a way that it covers the frame. Nothing else is important, just that it covers its frame. So run around here is fine. Once we're done with that, we need to go into the layers, take the black frame and place it between the image and the frame. Once you do that, you will see that now the black frame is only covering our original image. So it's not affecting our frame layer. And that's what we want. We want the shadow to be just inside of the frame, not around it. So now we have our shadow layer ready. However, it's all over the image and we don't want that. So to adjust this, we're gonna use masking. So let's go into masking, then into the mask actions, click on fill and then invert. So now it disappears. However, when we now go into the brush and make sure that we are on paint, we will be able to paint some of it back. So let's zoom in and looking at the direction of the light, I know that the shadow was on this edge. So let's adjust our brush first. Let's make it a little bit smaller. I think a little bit less softness, maybe somewhere around 80. And with the strength, let's stick to 100. After this, we can just make one dot here and then go at the bottom, hold the shift on our keyboard and make another dot there. Now it creates the shadow here and I know it's a little bit strong. However, we will adjust that in the second. Let's go back to our masking, come back to our brush, then go into the properties. And in the properties, we're gonna adjust the opacity of our shadow layer. So now it's on 50% and 
And what we want to do is we just want to bring it down as far as we want until it looks believable. The easier way to look at it is when you zoom out again. So let's just adjust it and see what we like. Usually what I like to do is to bring it down so you can't see it at all and then use the opacity slider going up and see at what point I start to like the result. So I think that the 15 is actually looking good. If you think that you're getting a little bit too much of the shadow, you can either mask it away with the use of brush again, or you can simply just take it and position it a little bit more behind the edge. So this is a simple way of how you can add a shadow to your image, add the depth to it, and make it a little bit more realistic. Once you finish here, you can now go ahead and apply any other effects to the image to make it even better. And of course that you can keep this image and just keep replacing the image on the frame and use it for multiple different projects. Also, before we finish, don't forget that you are getting the four sample frames that are coming from our Luminar Neo bundles. If you want to find out more about them, visit our website, cleverphotographer.com, or check out the links in the description of this video. Anyway, have a lots of fun, have a great week, and I'll see you with the next Luminar Neo tutorial. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.